I can construct for you a spherically symmetrical universe with Earth at its center, and you cannot disprove it based on observations. You can only exclude it on philosophical grounds. In my view, there's absolutely nothing wrong in that. What I want to bring into the open is the fact that we are using philosophical criteria and choosing our models. A lot of cosmology tries to hide that. You don't say, George. I mean, it didn't get any better since you've made this quote. They completely try to hide it. They call it science and they deny that it's it's basically philosophy. What he's saying here is that you can treat the Earth as stationary and in the center of the entire universe and you can't disprove it with any observations. You can only say, I don't like it philosophically. He says, I don't see anything wrong with that. Well, I disagree, but at least he tried to point it out to people because he said people try to hide that fact and claim it's science. Claim number one is that the Earth is in motion. The Earth is supposedly spinning over a thousand miles per hour at the equator while revolving around the sun 66,600 miles per hour on an actual tilt of 66.6 degrees. That's a positive claim. We need to kind of test that. And let me just break down some basic logic here. Do you ever experience that the Earth is moving? Of course not. We can stack rocks up. We actually notice when the Earth moves, it's called an earthquake, right? Because it's actually moving from its previous stationary position. We can see smokestacks going up just straight up in the air. From our observation, the Earth's not moving. Now, the globe claims it is, you just can't tell. Okay, maybe so. But you have to verify that, you know, you have to give us some type of evidence to truly substantiate that because the default position based on all empirical evidence, whether that be how we shoot missiles, how we fly planes, how we fly helicopters, how we do anything, we assume that the Earth is stationary and how we even look at anything in quote unquote space is we assume the Earth's in the center and stationary. So if you're gonna claim that's actually just an illusion, you have to of course substantiate that. So let's see if this claim of motion of this globe earth model was actually verified right i mean that's basic logic we need to verify if this claim is true because it seems like a lot of people don't really know what it is that they believe in and they've never actually assessed it with intellectual honesty and logic this is where they say that we live and just a quick reminder they say it's spinning over a thousand miles per hour east of the equator right and of course it's going at different speeds based on different uh, latitudes because it's a sphere they claim it's tilted wobbling three different wobbles at least on a 66.6 .6 degree axis and that's of course because 23.4 taken from 90 is 66.6 .6. and it's supposedly orbiting around the sun 66,600 miles per hour and then flying through the galaxy over 1 million miles per hour. And really it's, that's a typo. It's, it's flying with the sun through the galaxy 500,000 miles per hour as the galaxy flies through space over a million miles per hour. Here's a quote. No physical experiment ever proved that the earth actually is in motion. Lincoln Barnett, the universe and Dr. Einstein. Hmm, that seems a little different than what we've been told or led to believe, huh? We just covered the basic logic that everything we've ever experienced is that it's not moving. So we're going to need some evidence that it is moving. It's to the question whether or not the motion of the earth in space can be made perceptible in terrestrial experiments, meaning as to the question of we, whether or not we can actually detect or perceive the alleged motion of the earth in an experiment on the earth, we've already remarked that Every attempt of this nature led to a negative result, meaning we weren't able to actually ever detect, perceive, or measure the motion of the Earth that is assumed. Before the theory of relativity was put forward, it was difficult to become reconciled to this negative result. That's Albert Einstein, Relativity to Special and General Theory, 1920, page 61. He then explains that the struggle so violent way back in the day between Ptolemy and Copernicus would really be meaningless because either coordinate system could be used with equal justification. I, of course, challenge him on that. You have to verify the validity or justification for the idea that it's moving. We know that the stationary Earth can be used with justification because that's how we use the Earth for everything. This is a hostile witness and he says the two sentences, quote, the sun is at rest and the Earth moves, or the sun moves and the Earth is at rest, would simply mean two different conventions concerning two different coordinate systems, Albert Einstein and the evolution of physics, 1938. Of course, relativity is still used to this day as the glue for this entire claim that we're flying through space and just can't tell. So he says, while I was thinking about this problem in my student years, I came to the result of Mickelson. Morley experiment. Soon I came to the conclusion that our idea about the motion of the earth with respect to the ether is incorrect. If we admit Mickelson's null result as a fact, this was the first path which led me to the special theory of relativity. Since then, I've come to believe that the motion of the earth cannot be detected by any optical experiment, though the earth is revolving around the sun in the context of Mickelson Morley and using the word optics, that would be utilizing light, which is the most precise form of measurement that we have to this day. You can use laser interferometry to very precisely measure motion. 
This is the Mickelson Morley experiment. This is a visualization. It's called the most famous failed experiment in history. They shot two perpendicular light beams. One is supposedly going with the motion of the Earth. The other one is supposedly going against it as it flies around the sun. So it should take one of the light beams longer to get to the receiver because it has to travel further. If that's the case, that's what we should see right here. It should be a difference called an interference pattern or a friend shift. And what they actually saw was that it's way closer to being exactly the same. But if you look closely, it is not the same. What they did instead of accepting the results saying, oh, we're not measuring this motion of the Earth, we assume 30 kilometers a second. The Earth is supposedly flying through space 30 kilometers every one second, which is 66,000 miles per hour. They said, oh, well, actually, the light beams were separated because we are moving. But when we tried to measure it, you just couldn't tell because everything is contracting in relation to the sun. And so basically the apparatus itself or anything you tried to measure it, it'll contract just the right amount to make it look like the earth isn't moving. And this is called the rinse contraction or length contraction. The problem which now faced science was considerable for there seemed to be only three alternatives. The first was that the earth was standing still, which meant scuttling the whole Copernican theory and was unthinkable. So he's covering a nickel Smalley experiment here. He said they only had a few alternatives. First of which was, oh, the earth isn't moving. The, the Copernican theory is that we are flying around the sun and that was unthinkable. So what the evidence actually shows us is unthinkable. That goes back to how this is philosophy, not science. We still need actual evidence. This is Sir Arthur Eddington, a very famous physicist. The Michelson Morley experiment has thus failed to detect our motion through the ether because the effect looked for, the delay of one of the light waves is exactly compensated by an automatic contraction of the matter forming the apparatus. Sir Arthur Eddington, Space, Time, and Gravitation, page 20. This is Einstein saying in 1921, Dayton Miller, who he's talking about, he just replicated the Michelson Morley experiment over and over and over. Einstein, I believe that I've really found the relationship between gravitation and electricity, assuming, and now of course he just took Maxwell's equations, but anyway, assuming that the Miller experiments are based on a fundamental error, otherwise the whole relativity theory collapses like a house of cards. This was the expected result, right? Because one light wave is supposedly moving further. This is what they actually saw. You see, there is actually a separation between the waves here. They're not exactly the same. They claim that the apparatus contracted because everything on the earth is contracting in relation to the sun because it's supposedly moving around the sun. There is a separation. So what did they say? They said, oh, well, that's just instrumental error. Coincidentally, the instrument keeps on showing us error in the same direction that the sky moves and it keeps on doing it. I think it was probably temperature. So what did Miller do? Miller started testing it. He started testing it with radiant heat sources at different altitudes, different times of the year, different directions, etc. And he saw that the effect was consistent and that there was no leg to stand on to claim that it was just instrumental error, which was the best that Einstein or anyone else trying to save the heliocentric model could come up with at the time. Four years later in 25, he says, my opinion about Miller's experiments is the following. Should the positive result be confirmed that the special theory of relativity and with it, the general theory of relativity in its current form would be invalid. Then he's got Latin for experiment reigns supreme. Experiment is the supreme judge. Only the equivalence of inertia and gravitation would remain. However, they would have to lead to a significantly different theory. We've replicated it many times since then. And you have all these different tests that show that that effect is very real, meaning that there is a friendship, meaning that the light goes faster in the same direction that the sky moves. Everything moves east to west. If you shoot light in that direction, it goes a little bit faster. So now if we go back and we take Einstein for what he said, not only does evidence show that the Earth's not moving. Not only is there no way to actually detect, measure, or observe that the Earth is allegedly moving, but the entire theory proposed to save the heliocentric model and claim it was an illusion that we're not moving has to be thrown out according to the person who came up with it. Again, from none other than Einstein. But when I was a student, I saw that experiments of this kind had already been made, in particular by your compatriot Mickelson. He proved that one does not notice anything on Earth that it moves, but that everything takes place on Earth as if the Earth is in a state of rest. What they've had to do now is they've had to start updating and revising the arguments. So, you know, flat earthers are so stupid that they're constantly having to update their model in response to our arguments and response to our evidence. What they say now is, oh, they didn't claim that it actually contracted. They absolutely did. I just showed you that. You can go read Einstein's paper. I've read it. He specifically says, oh, we see that Lorentz contraction is correct. It's just interpreted different through relativity. And there was a, a contraction exactly the right amount to compensate for the missing time difference or the difference in the light waves. So they now say, oh, he didn't No, he doesn't really mean contraction. He doesn't say that. There's nothing to do with that. That's a lie. I just want you to soak that in that they have to actually bastardize the theory that saved their model and they have to lie. They then said, oh, 
Einstein didn't actually even know about Mickelson Morley when he came up with relativity. It had nothing to do with that. Well, that's funny because we just read multiple quotes from Einstein himself saying that's exactly what happened.